All right, we're back at the shop again. We're working on the 401. We're about to put the cylinder head on for checking the piston to valve clearance. So we have a sacrificial head gasket. But before we put the studs on, just so you know, some of these bolts go into the water jacket. You don't want water seeping up through the threads. So we have special ARP sealant that goes on the studs. And you would do that too if you had regular bolts. And uh, after we do this, we'll show you how to check the valve piston clearance. This is a checking push rod for checking the push rod length. It's adjustable. And once you've got it set to the size that you want and lock her down, then you can measure it with your measuring instrument, whatever you're going to use. And certain vehicles have different types of ends, depending on how high of a lift you're going with. Sometimes a ball might even interfere with the, with the rocker arms that you're using. Sometimes they're shaped different. Talk to your professional that's used to running what you want to do, and always get advice from other people that have done stuff before you. All right, still working with the valve train here. And after the heads have been milled, the surface of the block has been decked using different gaskets on the heads and different valve train now. Push rods are not going to be like stock. So with this mechanism here, he's got soft springs. They can easily be opened and closed. And he set the lash at 20 thousandths, like what his cam said. Then we rolled it through, watched it, and he put a little um, marking compound on the end of the valve stem. We rolled it through and then he kept adjusting the push rod longer until he got it right in the center. And then he'll have custom push rods made to that length. This is something that you should always check whenever you're modifying your motor so that you don't have a situation where it's putting undue stress on the guides and the valve stems. And if it got really bad and you had too long of push rods, the roller might go over the edge and catastrophic. This is another test that you would want to run if you've got this equipment set up just to know and be able to sleep at night when you change and you go to a different lift cam let's say you have really high compression this engine happens to have a dish in it so we really don't have that big of a problem but let's say if you had a dome we're going to roll this through and we'll go to maximum lift and then we're going to push down on here and see how much more clearance we still have we'll just now we're watching the intake valve open up and you've zeroed that out. Each time it comes around, it's a hundred thousandths. It's 200, 300, 400, 500, and 50, 60, 5. That's max lift. Now we can take this and push this down and you can see we got like about a quarter or 200 thousandths clearance so we don't have any problem worrying about our intake valve hitting the piston. So we're going a little bit past. Sometimes with the cam you can even have tighter tolerances after top dead center depending if your cam lobes a separation if you're advanced or retarded on the timing. So we're checking there's 100, 200, 300, so we got more clearance beyond. And you do that before top dead center also. You can see how it's been set up on the exhaust side. And we went through the same stages that you do on the intake side. And we check, we got plenty of clearance before and after top dead center at maximum lift. So we don't have to worry about that. And the push rod length seems to be perfect on this one too because we put the die cam on there and ran it through its pattern and it's dead center. We ended up
cleaning the surface of the engine block with acetone to get all the lubricant that came out of the studs. Just got it totally clean. They suggested putting on this Cometic head gas sandwich type. You see the rivets holding all three pieces together. That's the hot ticket nowadays. And got the surface of the aluminum heads all cleaned with acetone. It's time to put them on. Whenever you use ARP studs, there's a special lubricant that has to be put on the top and the bottom, underneath the nuts, on the threads, for you to get a proper torque reading. It's a must. You're going to need to clamp this head down properly. After all the modifications of decking the block and milling the heads for more compression, the holes do not line up with the intake manifold. This has to be milled also so the manifold will drop down in there and then the holes will line up. Right now we're like a half a bolt hole off. We've measured the gaskets. These are like 60 thousands. We have to even, we've tried it without the gaskets and then they're lined up. We need to go like another half thickness, so it'd be like 90 thousandths on each side. Then the bolt holes would be spot on. This gap is going to be filled in with a piece of aluminum and then a bead of silicone at the bottom because and it's going to be attached under here with countersunk screws but this does build up pressure in here and you don't want to just have silicone this thick it would be funny but it would blow out <laughs>